So All of Us Strangers is one of those movies that I don't know that I could ever watch again. I remember after I read the book Lie With Me by Philippe Besson, I sat motionless for hours afterwards and I wasn't able to pick that book up again until two years later when I felt ready to reread it. This is the feeling that All of Us Strangers gave me and it's one of the rare cases where the movie was actually quite a bit better than the book. The book was very good. But the changes that they made for the movie are specifically why the movie affected me so much and the book just didn't have the same impact. Anyway, more on the book in a bit. There will be spoilers as usual. On to the summary. Andrew Scott's character Adam is at his computer as he tries to write but he seems to be struggling for inspiration. He lounges about on the couch. He looks for something to eat but his fridge is in quite a sorry state. He lives on takeaways. He seems like a lonely bachelor. Just then, the alarm goes off in the apartment and he has to leave his building. He's the only one who goes outside though and the alarm stops after a while. So there ended up being no fire or emergency in the building. Later, there's a knock at his door. One of his upstairs neighbors, Harry, tells Adam that he saw him look up at his window during the alarm. It seems this could be a new apartment building because Harry does mention that they're the only ones there and there isn't even security yet. Harry is quite tipsy. He has a bottle of whiskey in his hand and he starts to flirt pretty quickly with Adam, asking him if he can come in. Adam is reluctant and he says that it wouldn't be a good idea for Harry to come in, but you can tell that he's intrigued or at least he's not put off by this. He does smile a little. He just looks like somebody who's caught a bit off guard because Harry is a little forward. Adam closes the door then and sits alone in his apartment as Harry goes back up to his. Adam takes the train to a suburb that's shown in an old photo that he has. He tracks down the house in the photo, but he doesn't go in, not yet. He just ends up walking around around the little village and it seems to be nostalgic for him as he breathes in the village air. Outside one of the shops in the town he bumps into another guy who asks him if they should go home together. This guy seems to know Adam and they do go home. The man and his wife are very happy to see Adam and, and through their conversation we find out that Adam is a screenwriter living in London and these are his parents. His mother refers to Adam as our son but the ages of his parents are mismatched here. They look to be Adam's age. Anyway they laugh over some memories of Adam as a child. Seems to be a very strange but kind of pleasant visit. Back at his apartment, Adam bumps into Harry again who apologizes for the other night. Adam tells him that he does actually like whiskey so if Harry wants to have a drink, they can. But as he says this, the elevator doors are already closing so Harry is gone and nothing comes of it. Suddenly Adam is writing and at one moment he goes to the window and looks down with his binoculars. He sees Harry looking up at his apartment and Harry eventually comes in and they get to chatting. At one point Harry checks to make sure that Adam is gay and he says yes. Harry asks if he can kiss Adam then. It's awkward at first. Adam is a little nervous but after a while they get comfortable with each other and things go from 0 to 100 very fast with Harry going down on Adam. Afterwards when Harry asks about Adam's family he mentions that his parents died before he turned 12 in a car crash. That's interesting. Harry tells Adam that he'd like to see him again and Adam says he'd like that. Adam goes back to his parents' house and we see him in his childhood bedroom that his parents have kept as is. It's like a time capsule of his youth and he seems comforted by it even though his mother does fuss over him and hover over him quite a bit. His mother doesn't know that he's gay because she asks him if he has a girlfriend and, and she finds it a shame that he doesn't have one. That's when he tells her that he's gay. She's a little taken aback by us. She asks, well, don't you want to have children? She's kind of fidgety and distracted trying to figure it out. She worries for him because she's heard that this could be a lonely life for him and, and she She's worried about HIV, although she calls it that terrible disease. At one point, I wondered what time period this is set in. I didn't see a cell phone, but Adam does have a flat screen TV and a laptop. So it seems as though his parents could just be very old fashioned and they live outside of the city anyway in his childhood home. So this isn't that strange. Harry comes over then and runs Adam a hot bath when he sees that he got a chill from being out in the rain. What follows is an almost unbearably touching scene. Harry tells Adam that he's been thinking about him. He wants to watch crap on TV and the couch together and have sex, although it's fine if Adam isn't into that. Adam is, but he admits that he wasn't into sex for a long time because he was scared he'd die. They do have sex that night and then they talk about their families afterwards. Adam gets emotional when Harry says that while his family knows about him being gay, he still feels kind of distant from them. He's always felt like a stranger, but coming out just put a name to that difference. Though it's not anybody's fault. Adam asks Harry if he wants to stay the night and Harry says yes. By the way, Harry does have siblings who have families of their own and they seem to be closer with their parents and Harry doesn't have that same familial connection with them. Adam goes to his parents home again and his mom isn't there so he talks to his dad who puts his mind at ease and tells him that his mom just needs time. She'll realize that Adam's sexuality and what it means, her legitimate concerns about him getting sick or lonely. It isn't about her really. His 
dad is more well adjusted and he even makes a joke about how he thinks he might have known because Adam could not throw a ball. He says he did hear Adam crying in his room though and Adam talks about the bullying he faced at school. Still his dad didn't ask Adam about it back then. He didn't ask Adam why he was crying and Adam didn't tell. Adam does say though that he still thinks about how his father would tell him over and over not to cross his legs like a girl and even now when he's about to do it he thinks about that every time. His father, now that Adam is out, admits to having thought back on some of the insane sensitive of gay jokes that he made and he clearly feels bad about it but Adam does say that he has a lot of good memories as well. His dad starts crying and he apologizes and Adam does too and they embrace. Adam and Harry start taking their relationship outside of the apartment while they go dancing at a nightclub. This makes me nervous because it was so safe in their little bubble at the apartment. They take some drugs, they dance, they kiss. Then the next thing we see they've settled into a very cozy home life together watching movies, spending the night with each other. Harry hangs out at the apartment and reads while Adam writes. By the way up until this point Harry is still a bit of a mystery. We don't know what he does for work. We don't really see his apartment because they only really hang out at Adam's apartment. There's no feeling that Harry is hiding anything. In fact if anything he comes across as incredibly sincere and honest but we just don't know much about him. Something happens then and it looks like a dream. Adam spends Christmas with his parents and he makes his mother promise that they won't go anywhere after Christmas dinner. She promises that they won't. That evening he can't sleep and he goes into his parents bed. This appears to be a scene from his childhood, only Adam is his adult self in the scene. Suddenly Harry appears in the dream to tell him that he's okay. He wakes up then, Adam, from another dream on the train and he's looking very unwell. And then for what looks like the final and real time, he wakes up again in bed with Harry who says that he kept screaming for his parents when he was high and Harry comforts him. So we don't really know when his dreams end and the reality begins. They were in the club, it seems as though Adam might have had a bad trip and he's been unwell for a while in bed. Anyway, perhaps that's the point for us not to know because Adam doesn't really know either and it's supposed to be disorienting. We find out about the night that Adam's parents died then. He was supposed to go with them somewhere for Christmas drinks but on the road their car slid on black ice. His father died immediately but his mother died in hospital. Their loss is all tangled up in him and everything really, even him being gay. It's made him feel that the future doesn't matter. He has this solidified terror of being alone, he says. He takes Harry to his childhood home then and it's dark and he starts acting frantic, knocking on the doors and windows trying to get his parents attention but he doesn't seem to realize that his parents aren't home. He calls out for them wanting to introduce Harry to them but Harry tries to calm him down and take him home. He realizes that Adam is having some kind of episode. Harry does appear to see Adam's mom in the window but he doesn't let Adam know that. Harry also seems rather taken aback by it. Then suddenly Adam wakes up from another dream or into another dream really. His parents are there and he tells them about Harry. His dad says that it's best that he doesn't come around to visit them anymore as they can see what this is doing to him and he needs to move on. They have one more meal together and they tell him that he should try with Harry. Adam goes back home and he goes to Harry's apartment and it looks like he might be starting to move on trying to take his parents advice. He goes to Harry's apartment and it's clear that there's an odor at first. The place is a mess, the TV is on, there are some drugs on the table. Adam knocks on a door in the apartment calling out for Harry. Harry, but whatever he finds causes him to close that door again in horror before reopening it again slowly. He finds an empty liquor bottle next to Harry who was out cold. It's the same liquor bottle that Harry had the night that they met, only now the liquor bottle is empty. Then he sees Harry out in the kitchen. He tells Harry that he said goodbye to his parents, that before he was too scared to let Harry in but he implies that he's ready now. Harry says that he was so scared that night and that he really needed to not be alone. That's when the story properly falls into place and the reveal is devastating. Even though you kind of feel it coming at this point. Harry died that night, the night that he met Adam and everything up until this point has been in Adam's imagination. Harry realizes that his body is in the next room and he says that he can smell it. He's ashamed and he doesn't want Adam to see his other body like that. He asks then why did nobody find him? Where were his parents? Since his body had started to smell at that point it's pretty clear that his parents haven't missed him for quite a few days. Nobody has alerted the police to come and check on him or anything and because their building is rather deserted we don't know how long he would have been there if not for Adam finding him. Anyway this is one of the saddest ways to die not just alone having nobody really know or notice. Adam assures Harry that the person in that room is not Harry. He's the version of himself in the kitchen standing with Adam. Adam seems desperate to hold on to this version of Harry and to be fair at this point in the movie so was I. Adam and Harry go back to Adam's apartment where Harry tells Adam that he saw his parents 
occupants of the house. Harry falls asleep as Adam cuddles him and recites a poem or a song to him. It seems that Adam has developed another unhealthy attachment to someone else that he's loved and lost. I felt oddly comforted by his delusion and this ending in a way because I couldn't bear the loneliness anymore and these two really look after each other. Anyway, that's the movie version of All of Us Strangers. As for the book version, it's set in Tokyo and the protagonist Harada is a divorced man and his relationship in the apartment is with a woman in the building named Katsura, or Kei. The book is very clearly more of a fantasy. While Harada knows that seeing his parents and spending time with them is some kind of delusion, it has a very real and physical impact on him. It causes him to waste away and to deteriorate physically over several days quite rapidly to the point where people around him become concerned that he's dying. The more he sees his parents, the more life force is seeped out of him until he has to say goodbye to them. His producer friend and especially Kay implore him to stop seeing his parents but he has a difficult time letting go initially until he eventually does. The twist at the end is similar to the movie where it turns out that Kay was dead all along having stabbed herself in the chest the first night that they met but it turns out that she's a little bit more of a vengeful spirit wanting to drag Harada with her until she has to let him go. She knows that she can't drain his life force because he didn't love her from his heart the way he did his parents. These are the rules of the other world. The story does slightly touch on some lore or Japanese superstitions, which was interesting. Anyway, eventually Harada does make a recovery after a stay at the hospital, but he does have some lingering health issues like damaged eyesight. In the end though, he does fare a little better than Adam, I suppose. And yeah, that is All of Us Strangers and the book is called Strangers. If you have seen the movie or read the book, feel free to share your thoughts and thank you for watching.